It's very common for Latin Americans to kind of gather together in the morning, preferably, mm -hmm. and they're drinking their little cafecito and they're eating their little like pastry and they're just talking about whatever is going on in their lives. And um, I wanted to bring that, well, we wanted to bring that into the wider community because I think we all would like to know a little bit more about each other. And, you know, we're a small knit community and we would benefit a lot from knowing about what we're all from. This podcast is a production of Widener Law Commonwealth in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. For more information, visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu slash podcast. Cafecito with Balsa is a student-run podcast where traditional and non-traditional law students come together to share their unique journeys through law school. We're going to hear the voices of both majority and minority law students as they discuss their challenges, trumps, and diverse perspectives on a wide range of topics. Tune in for a dynamic conversation that reflects the rich tapestry of the Widener Commonwealth law students. So my name is Giselle Berrigan. <laughs> um, I'm a 3L at Widener, and I am Mexican from Guadalajara. Uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, and um, also Michoacan, so 50-50, um, and introduce yourselves. <laughs> okay, um, hi, I'm Tommy Begley, I am a 3L, uh, currently the treasurer of LASA and the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Uh, this summer, I joined the Marine Corps and was commissioned a uh, second lieutenant, and um, I'm half Irish American and half Peruvian on my mother's side. Thank you for your service, Tommy. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> so my name is Lillian L. Molinex. Um, I am the vice president for LALSA. Um, I am, I want to say first generation, but what is the definition of first generation? Is that like when your parents bring you to the U.S. and then you're the first generation to like do things? Is that what first generation is? Yeah, I always had the impression that first generation... Yeah. Yeah. Is I was had the impression, is? like, because you're like the first generation in your family to okay. like, be in the United States or born so or to maybe, do law school. Yeah. Okay. That's true. <laughs> so maybe I'm not first generation. Maybe I'm just well, has an immigrant. Anyone, has, has anyone in your family been to law school? No, but like, uh, to be I, in this country? Yes. Yeah. I think because I wasn't born generation. here. I was born in Mexico. I was born oh, in okay. Sinaloa, Mexico. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm not first generation. <laughs> I am an Im immigrant. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, thank you guys for introducing yourselves. I'm so happy we got the opportunity to do this because Lily and I, I remember the day we were in um our kitchen <laughs> and we were like, what are we going to do for next semester? And yeah. I was like, you know what? Let's do a podcast. And you were like all for it. Yeah. And you're like, let's do it. We mm -hmm. were going to um, get our own little equipment, but thanks to Widener, they were very supportive um, and we're doing it here. So I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. very exciting. But... Yeah. To, uh, to see this um, come to like yeah. real life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then um, I also want to talk about the the cultural aspect of this podcast. So it's very customary, and I know that um, Lily can attest to this, and maybe Tommy, your family too, Peruvian, can also attest to it. It's very common for Latin Americans to kind of gather together in the morning, preferably, mm -hmm. and they're drinking their little cafecito, and they're mm -hmm. eating their little like pastry, and they're just talking about whatever is going mm -hmm. on in their lives. And um, I wanted to bring that, well, we wanted to bring that into the wider community because I think we all would like to know a little bit more about each other. And, you mm -hmm. know, we're a small knit community and we would benefit a lot from knowing about what we're all from. I, I agree. Like in a lot of our uh, cultures, um, community is a very important value. And yeah. we, we, we can never get too much community, especially in the law community. Wow, oh, that sounded yeah. really cheesy. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, and definitely like um in in like our native countries, um cafecito um in the morning or whenever is something that is like very um like laid I feel like they live very like laid back. Like every time I visit, mm -hmm. um, you see like old people on their um 
porches or whatever just watching people walk by and they'll say like buenos dias or yeah buenas tardes um and just mm-hmm. you know just people watching and, and it's uh it makes me realize how fast we live in the u.s uh, uh, in mexico time stops mm-hmm. i don't know if you guys can attest to that just stops. I mean, you're living in the moment or if you visit i mean uh with, with me my uh grandma um like born and raised in peru like taught me everything i know about my culture mm-hmm. me and her always like kind of like butt heads in a sense because like i'm always like in a rush i'm from new jersey that's mm-hmm. all we do mm-hmm. that's how we were raised jersey too. Mm-hmm. and i joined the marines where we rushed to stop signs meanwhile my grandma very much just wants to enjoy life mm-hmm. not rush through it i wish yeah. that's something that like we can incorporate in our lives easier well, especially law school so yeah that'd be nice so but i that's something so admirable about them um that i really i wish i could be more patient like Mm -hmm. they are and it's so funny but like that's also too like when you said like the people in the street that you see them and they're always like outside and they're like Mm -hmm. saying hi like that's always what I remember Mm -hmm. like when I go to Mexico and it's like yeah so beautiful and it makes you feel like you're not just like a stranger walking in the street like there's like they acknowledge you Yeah. yeah so um because of that um I there is a there's a mission statement for LASA that I really um, appreciate, and I think this is something that I think everybody could relate. Um, it's in Spanish, so I'm going to say it in Spanish, and then I'm going to say it in English. Nosotros como estudiantes de derecho somos el pasado, el presente, y el futuro de nuestra gente. That means that us law students are the past, the present, and the future of our people, and I think that is very true Mm -hmm. it's powerful yeah so um with that being said um let's talk a little bit about LASA and then we're going to get to the meat of the conversation (laughs) because it's going to be there's some tea to spill some tea (laughs) so um LASA the Latin American Law Students Association I love it I think this is a great community Widener is so supportive of our clubs and I think for Latin American law students you know we're here we're far away from our homes and I think it's a way that we can all can kind of connect and feel like we're kind of with family in a way because we Mm -hmm. relate to other people Mm -hmm. um that's why I'm like telling everybody like oh please come join us because like I know how it is to like feel by yourself when your family's like not here Um, Yeah, and especially when it's the first time that you've um, gone away from your family, like a lot of us, like first generation students, we um, went to um, undergrad in our like hometowns or like nearby. So like, I feel like a lot of us commuted and then this is the first time like actually being away. Being an adult more, so. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Grab your croissant, Lily. You're so good. Oh yeah. Before it gets cold. (laughs) But yeah, with um, with Balsa, our goals is pretty much to make that community stronger and have those Latin American law students um, have a place to be safe and be themselves and be able to bring their culture. I think I would love to learn more about like everybody, all the other Latin American cultures as well, because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm also very sheltered with just the Mexican culture. So I would mm-hmm. love to know more about like everybody else's. Yeah, I mean, I, I like lots of great opportunity for, for me to learn about um, other cultures as well as give me initiative to research my own more because my mom didn't really teach me anything. Mm-hmm. My grandma taught me some and then I just like learned by, well, going to different places. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing too. I feel like um, a lot of these cultures um, get lost um, in like the when you're first generation or whatever, second generation. Like um, you get so like Americanized that like a lot of people don't like remember their roots or really have any knowledge. Or there, I know a lot of Hispanics who um, like don't speak Spanish, and I think that's like such a shame. <laughs> Sorry, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, thanks, mom. Real here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like the just the Spanish language, just knowing the language brings so much more like knowledge and um like cultural awareness. 
you know, believe me, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll have you know, Richie Valens, famous um, Mex Mexican American singer from the fifties, oh, yes, yes, did not speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the original La Bamba guy. Oh, okay. He just knew the song, didn't but he didn't like, speak it. Pu Puppy Love too. Oh yeah, but like he didn't. That was well, good. Well, at least was, I think so. Puppy Love. Yeah, no, I definitely can attest to that because I grew up. So it was, aquí somos hispanos en la casa. Like, it was like here and at home, we're Mexican, we're Hispanic. And then when you go outside in the real world, where you kind of, kind of like get used to like the American, you know, mm -hmm. American way of life. And I think I, growing up, I got so used to being around like, I guess, white people. So it was hard for me to kind of get comfortable with being who I actually was. Mm -hmm. And um, it was my job with Mitu Carlos, shout out to you, San Diego Transfer, Lakewood, New Jersey, <laughs> <laughs> um, that I learned more about myself um, when I actually worked with Hispanic people. I actually um, understood more of the struggles and I got to learn more about my culture. Mm. And I will forever be grateful because now I can't identify myself as anybody other than hispanic right yeah and it's important to be like proud of that and not you know embarrassed to say i'm oh, mexican i love it yeah I love it. yeah and um to attest to like your um you saying that like um at home you had to like speak spanish and, mm -hmm. and all this and and um like at school you had to like be american you know and that kind of like Thing contributes to like an identity crisis, especially as mm -hmm. like a teenager. Him just went back and forth. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, like and then and then when you also when you like go visit like Mexico, for example, like if you're Mexican, people there they're like, oh, you're not like Mexican enough. And then when you come like, to the U.S., they're like, they're like, oh, look at look at that Mexican or whatever, you yeah. know. <laughs> no, that was funny because my mom literally was like well, you got to work on your Spanish because over there, they're not going to understand mm -hmm. you. Or they're like, make fun of you. Like mm -hmm. if you have like a an accent, speaking Spanish. Um, My parents are cruel, but it's make true. Make fun of me. Cause uh, like, I, I remember this one um, girl from my undergrad wasn't even Spanish, but like she, she like studied it, like got like a minor in it, like really good at it. But was, but was like tr trying to like, um, like tell me how to like sp speak. To like my when when she heard me talking to my grandma on the phone. Wow, it was like in it Spanish. Was, it, it was bizarre. Not gonna lie. Oh wow. D did your grandma like speak to you in Spanish? Sometimes, like I mean, it was it wasn't consistent enough for her to fully sick. I mean, mm -hmm. I still write in Spanish pretty well though. Mm, that's really good. That's Maybe that's good. like a good way to like learn it faster. Also, mm -hmm. I think I heard Kobe Bryant learned um Spanish from his mother in law watching telenovelas. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. how my grandma learned English. Like just watching the yeah, novelas, so he learned so Spanish. Honest. Yeah, just being around it all the time. I think practice, practice, and being perfect. open to it. Yeah, like, yeah, open to like wanting to learn it. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially like I've I can um say that too. Like like in the reverse side, when um people from different countries come to the U.S., you know, they really have to break through that barrier and of like being embarrassed or being like shy to try to speak the language, you know, and it's okay to like mispronounce things. And and especially like on this side of the country, I feel like there's less diversity. So like a lot of people, they're less inviting or, you know, like, oh, like, what did you say? Like, if you don't say it perfectly yeah. with a good accent. I um, hate when people say this is America speak English. Oh, I yeah. hate when people say that. And I've heard that at jobs. And I literally look at that. Like I look at people I mean, who say it and I'm like, yeah. I mean, I mean, do you hear uh, yourself? Like, America is, is, has always been a mixture of different cultures. I mean, yeah. the Germans, Dutch, British, mm -hmm. various native tribes, like, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Um, and I think especially because we have minority parents who are considered minorities, mm -hmm. it gets you like your blood boiling in a way, and you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like, I mean, like not just minorities, but I'm sure we all have parents who have been a victim of yeah things. Like my um, my mother, uh, she lived in Texas for a time, and her family was let's, let's just say uh, it wasn't as friendly of, of a state back back then. Yeah, but I just want to like segue a little bit into the struggles 
of being a first generation mm-hmm. Latin American law student. Or second. Yeah. Or, or second. second. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's or third, an exception. Or fourth, or fifth, whatever. I'll, I'll speak. I, I have two sides of my family. What can I say? So let's talk about first being, because because if you think about it, first generation Latin American law student itself is kind of like two different things put together. So you're like first generation, mm-hmm. and then you're Latin American law student. Mm-hmm. A category within a category. Yeah. yeah. So being first generation struggles, like what did you guys have to go through? What didn't, that the, the real question yeah. is what, what didn't we have to go through? Um, especially you because you came here very young yeah so you probably had it maybe like more traumatizing in a way yeah yeah I guess so interesting way to end college (laughs) to be honest it's all very traumatizing yeah it's a blur yeah um I don't I think you just have to be okay with being misunderstood a lot of the time I think that's um, I, I think at first um, that really affects like your mental health, especially with like your family, because yeah. you um, want the support mm-hmm. um, and the understanding. But the truth is that you're not going to get it, especially because, you know, a lot of our parents, they didn't even finish like high school. So they don't yeah. even know like what it is, like everything um like when I first applied to undergrad, like I, I did everything on my own. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you just, and, and they don't understand like how hard it they, is. They don't. Yeah. Um, it's like, do you want to say something, Tom? Um, I just have a completely talking. different viewpoint. Because, uh, oh, okay. So let me finish off Lily's. Yeah, let's, yeah. So yeah. I totally can mm-hmm. agree with you know having to do everything on your own, not knowing where to go to. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it's so ironic that like, technically your parents like rely on you to kind of guide them. Yeah. And you're like, I don't even know where I'm going. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big, big struggle. I think with first generation is like, you're doing, you're literally like, you're driving the car and you're yeah, and uh, I think, I don't know, I found myself having to be, like, well, feeling, like, guilty and, like, selfish to, like, put myself first and be, like, you know what, like, I can't do that, like, I need to focus on my career right now, you know, yeah. you guys had your opportunity um, to, you know, to, like, advance your career or to do whatever, and, like, I need to focus on mine, like, this is my prime to do that, so it's it's tough because, um you know, you you really care and you really want to help, but at you the need same to understand time, you're busy. Yeah, you, and mm-hmm. you need to set boundaries, and I I think that's that's the hardest thing setting boundaries yeah. with your loved ones and with everybody else. I think too. Yeah, it's like they it's they it's like they try to understand, but they can't at the same mm-hmm. time because it's just it's different. It's different, and um, you know, especially like your your dad's a lawyer. So you yeah. kind of had a little more of like. It's a uh, interesting. Yeah. So for the longest time, I actually did not want to be a lawyer. I want to be anything but a lawyer because of my dad. Guy like saying, "Cool, that's your story. I'm gonna write my own." Mm-hmm. Long story short, um, I decided I, I wanted to become a, a criminal defense lawyer, but get starting in the U.S. Marine Corps. So I'm trying to do that path right now. I'm trying to write my own story. So what motivated you to come to law school if you wanted to? Did you have to come to law school in order for you to figure out you wanted to be in like the Marines? Or... Uh, no, the Marines I've always wanted to be since I was like um, a, maybe eight years old. Okay. That's that's nice to hear because um, a lot of the students that I talk to um, here, they're like, oh yeah, like I always wanted to be a lawyer since a little girl. Like they told me that I was good at arguing or whatever, you know, yeah. they had those stories. And yeah. I I feel like I don't, like yeah. I, I think like for me it was just like maybe almost like a last minute decision honestly oh, oh god um oh yeah i mean second year of college that's when i, I started saying okay lawyer i mean like i uh, and then maybe a month before the deadline for here mm-hmm. as i i put in my application yeah mm-hmm. i was always with the Im- impression like my parents always told me you know go to school go to school, go to school. And um, 
you know, don't do what we do. And what they do is nothing to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, something I'm super proud of them. And um, I always like even with like, I think I told you the other Mm -hmm. day, there's like a little girl who was on her little tablet when we were walking up the class and her parents, I guess, were cleaning. And Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? That was me. And I I that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to school and I have to. It's either doctor or lawyer. It has to be one mm-hmm. of those two because those are the most, those are yeah, like the no highest. You, you want to be a professional. Yeah. So I said, law school it is. Mm-hmm. And um, so this is the big, one of the biggest reasons is that I wanted to come to law school is not only because I love it and it, it, it fits, but I also want to, I want the American dream. That's mm-hmm. what my parents came for. Right. Yeah. So. And yeah. I, I, I could definitely relate to that. I mean, big thing with my grandma is she constantly tells me to keep learning, to keep working hard. Like, it's crazy. I On my dad's side, there's lawyers everywhere. It's kind of terrifying. But <laughs> when it comes to the person who influenced me the most through my law school and through my education and everything, it's been my grandma because she <laughs> always taught me to work hard and do better. So <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, and um, Giselle, like you watching that little girl, like I bet that's like mo- more motivation. Oh for you. yeah, I, if I were you, I would I would see that and I would be like, oh my god, I still this re- is a sign to like continue, um, yeah. and keep working hard, and you know we're almost there. <laughs> so, every yeah. time I see all the um, this is the thing with my I always every time I see like the maintenance people and mm-hmm. all that stuff, I always treat them the same as a CEO yeah. right. because I see my parents, mm-hmm. so how I would, I would want people to treat my parents is how I, I treat people. Right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so right. that's a big struggle with like being first generation mm-hmm. is you kind of have a pressure in a way you got to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. your parents, yeah. Cause your parents are like, you know what? I came here to give you a better life. Yeah. And so. that's, that's another, like, uh, for me, that's what's been, um, of more motivation to me um like growing up seeing my parents all the things that they went through struggle or whatever um just you know I I have to make it worth their all their sacrifices like imagine um giving up everything and coming to a completely different country where you don't know the language like that's you don't have like crazy sources yeah money like nothing Nothing. It's, so, it, it's 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 one of the biggest risks ever. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's, it's one crazy. man. It's, it's one man I love for family. That's yeah. the important thing. And you think about it, you're like so inspired by them because you're like, how did you do it? Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. it's like if they didn't give up, why should we? Exactly. Like so. they pass the torch on to us. Yeah. Fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because of that, let's talk a little bit about like the mental health during law school generation, I could definitely talk about this. And I'm, I'm trying to be very open about mental health with anybody who wants to talk about it, because it's very taboo in the Hispanic culture. Like, they think that if you go see a psychiatrist, a therapist, you're in like the whack shack, you're crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's not like that at all. You just need a little I mean, bit of encouragement. It's a mm-hmm. traditional um is a stigma stem from traditional views that, well, we, we we could say we could evolve and do better. Yeah, I never had like mental health issues until I came to law school because of just the stress, the anxiety, mm-hmm. the imposter syndrome. So oh, it's like, it's mm-hmm. hard to I'm, adjust. Alone. And um, especially having sometimes, it, it took my parents a while for them to like understand, like, this is a real issue like Mm -hmm. it's not you know oh you know you have nothing to do that's why Mm -hmm. you know you feel that way it's like no it's like legit Mm -hmm. yeah it's I mean it's very fast-paced and like I'm I'm realizing marine lawyer Mm -hmm. I'm welcoming this in but like a a big thing that my drill instructor kept uh, saying during uh, most years over the summer was you asked for this. You asked for this while you were mm-hmm. like having us carry our uh, beds across across the squad bay. Mm-hmm. I mean, like some cartoonish punishment or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we asked yeah. for this because like it's it, it's gonna be hard, but we're gonna have to like work through it. 
Yeah, and I think definitely being in such like a stressful environment um, mm -hmm. and constantly like having all this pressure definitely like brings out all your like um, all your issues. <laughs> yeah, and also like you, I guess also like it's hard for family to understand it too because mm -hmm. their mental health issues or their anxiety or their stress is was completely different from ours mm -hmm. so it's like maybe I look at it as like my parents probably saw it as like you know you don't have a real reason to feel you know stressed I mean, and stuff. because but no but yeah. it's because back then their stress was maybe for example am I going to eat today yeah or am I going mm -hmm. to be able to sleep tonight or stress is relative bed? to generations yeah Whatever. so so I mean. it took a while which my parents are super supportive and they're like the best but I'm it, it I hope with time more Hispanics are become more open to like mm -hmm. you know it's not just I would hope especially now because I mean just going to talk about the elephant in the room lockdowns and other factors kind of made a lot of like mental health issues come to surface and yeah. we're seeing yeah. it in our in all all levels of education from kindergarten to law school i completely forgot about the lockdown and we <laughs> we came to law to law school right after the yeah. Lock, yeah. lockdown yeah. thinking about it like right after oh, yeah but i mean i just first time i saw like, both you two yeah you're wearing masks yeah okay that's yeah. something wow. to think about wow yeah no that's crazy that, that we've been in law school for too long mm -hmm. <laughs> no it's good thing we're graduating but <laughs> Um, time is relative yeah yeah I think uh for like what I've used to cope with like um mental health, I found that like when I stop that's when like all my mental health issues come because I'm mm -hmm. I'm very busy like I have like outside of um, law school, I have like a lot of hobbies. I have a lot of yeah, things, interests, interests that I like to do. Um, I have a dog. I have to, you know, I have the responsibility of like walking her every day. Mm -hmm. I, I go to the gym. I recently got into um, pottery. Mm -hmm. So I, I have like a pottery wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and then like I have a boyfriend. So <laughs> um, that's more time, you know? Yeah. So like I find, I find that if I stop, that if I just take a second to breathe that's when everything hits me and it's sometimes it's not good yeah I definitely um I like right. to be busy too like mm -hmm. I love to be busy um because I feel like when I'm not busy I'm like thinking uh... but what I do um notice that I, I really love self-care a lot I love skincare I love the makeup and just um even though I don't wear it all the time but um but I love you know mm -hmm. taking time to kind of make myself feel better mm -hmm. so I think that also helps me a little bit and then also I also reach out to like professionals and like mm -hmm. hey like I just need someone to talk to just you know and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that yeah it's really yeah. good really um courageous to do yeah. to reach out when you need help yeah tell that's me, I agree. Yeah. what do you do Tommy um there's a lot so, of things yeah you do yeah that's right I, I mean uh, I mean like a, a guy in my platoon try like comparing me to like a, a renaissance man because uh, on my free time which I try to make sure I do for the sake of my sanity mm -hmm. well I've done I've been doing martial arts especially kickboxing for about 20 years now um I played bass I could write some piano. I'm okay at piano, but I'm, it's mostly bass guitar and ukulele. Uh, I love hiking, and but more than anything, being busy does like help. And also, mm -hmm. when it comes to like keeping myself moving, like mm -hmm. keep, keeping myself uh, progressing, upgrading. Mm -hmm. Big reason why I joined the Marines is because they have a really strong culture of self improvement. Mm -hmm that I really took um, to heart as a martial artist and as a law student because we had to be the hardest workers like mm -hmm. of people in our in our age group in our demographic oh okay yeah I think you chose the like hardest yeah you chose oh definitely <laughs> oh, oh, oh definitely but I mean like the um, well, marines is no joke oh yeah but I mean I mean like other branches you don't have to go through the, all the crazy training mm -hmm. um not everyone in the army is a soldier Mm -hmm. Not every person in the Air Force is a pilot. 
but every Marine is Marine. Mm-hmm. That's true. Oh, that's really true. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who listened to this podcast. And I think I um, thank you guys for mm-hmm. being here and making this true, like yeah. making this happen because this is the first step and we're going to have a lot of other orgs come in and, um, you know, some days maybe Lily's going to be hosting and then Tommy could be hosting mm-hmm. and um, we're going to learn about them. And we have a very long wait list. So mm-hmm. we're trying to get everybody in. Very exciting things. Yeah. I want to thank It'll Professor. Yeah. I want to thank Professor Family mm-hmm. for getting us the connection with Stephanie. Stephanie is amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, Brian too. Brian yeah. set this up. And if any if I'm missing anybody, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Oh, Dean Teplitz. Dean mm-hmm. Teplitz with the Starbucks. Yes. Amazing. Um, but yeah, I am looking forward to getting no you guys more and getting to know more of the other organizations as well because I think with like um with balsa which we should be having next month we're gonna have like a different perspective mm-hmm. on a lot of the struggles that maybe maybe they go through the same thing we do yeah and Who we knows? don't even know yep. yeah, um, I mean some similarities some differences but either way unity through just talking about these things mm-hmm. yeah so I hope you guys had fun like I did um and i hope you guys enjoyed your coffee and your yeah. treat yeah but really this good. this feels like we're just like at home and just talking, talking. Yeah. yeah yeah this is nice yeah, yeah this so. was like a therapy session yeah <laughs> we're feeling like we're letting it all out feel. yeah yeah i don't know i don't feel anything but... <laughs> oh okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's dead in the inside already <laughs> thank, you can thank my drill instructors for that <laughs> love those guys well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Widener University Commonwealth Law School is the Pennsylvania capital's only law school. With three specialized centers of legal scholarship through its Law and Government Institute, Environmental Law and Sustainability Center, and Business Advising Program, Widener Law Commonwealth offers an exceptional learning experience that is personal, practical, and professional. Visit commonwealthlaw.widener.edu for more information.